Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below and there you will find a link to my Ravelry designer page where you can see all of the patterns I have available for you to get and knit up for yourself. Also in the description below, you will find links to a couple of social media places. One is the Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group. It is a place where we can continue the conversations that we start here on the YouTube channel in our videos. We'd love to have you come over and join. Also a link to my Patreon account. Patreon is a subscription style service that connects creators with the people who like their work. It's sort of like a tip jar. So if I'm consistently in your part of your day and you're watching my videos and feel like you want to like buy me a coffee or something, please come over and check that out and see if it's something you want to do. Today, I have a pattern tour for you. It is not a new pattern. This is a, a pattern that I wrote quite a while ago before I had a YouTube channel. So I wanted to talk to y'all about it. You might recognize it was in the background of my last video and several of you seemed interested in it and I'm excited about it because it's sort of undergoing a bit of a revamp. Um, this pattern, it is called Courant, C-O-U-R-A-N-T, and it was originally published in Twist Collective. Twist Collective was an amazing online magazine that one of their main things is that they wanted to make sure that designers got a equitable share of the pattern sales. So it was one of these splits and whenever they sold my pattern, they would give me a cut of it. And it was a wonderful magazine and it ran for many years, but recently they decided that it was time to fold it up and stop with Twist Collective. And because of that, the rights, the entire rights to the pattern and any knitter, any designer who had patterns in Twist Collective were able to get 100% of the rights back to themselves so that they could do what they wanted to with the pattern. So it is on Ravelry and I will work on getting it uploaded to uh, Lovecraft um, because that is another venue. It's in the UK and some people like that one. Um, and it is the Twist Collective format. And so this is the original. This is the one that I knit up and it was in Miss Bab Shiruku, which is a beautiful silk blend. But sadly, this yarn has been discontinued. And I know it's super frustrating when you see a pattern that you want to make and you can't get the yarn anymore and then you have to figure out substitutions. So for essentially a re-release of this pattern, I decided to have it reworked in a different yarn. And here it is. So, and you know, since we're doing a different yarn, we thought we would do a different color. So looky here. just being a little quiet so you can look at it. So this is the tail end. You can see it. This is, since the original was in Miss Babs, I decided to go to Miss Babs again. And this is in Miss Babs Woodbury. Woodbury is a 65% merino and 35% tussa silk. And again, I wanted to go with a silk blend because silk really helps um, lace hold a really good block. And that is something that is very essential for this pattern is holding a good block. This one had silk in it. And so I wanted to find it is a fingering weight yarn. It is 400 yards to a skein and each, uh, this, this, the stole takes about 
one and a half skeins of each color. So you need to get four skeins, you need about total, and this is an approximate because it's lace and it's color work, so the gauge is kind of tough on it. You're looking at about 1,200 yards, 600 in each color-ish. So you have to buy two skeins of each, but then you'll have some fun left over. Um, or if you want to make it bigger, you know, you can make it bigger. And the colors that we chose are slate and denim. Slate is the gray and denim is the blue because we wanted to show sort of a more casual effect. It's very more monochromatic and you can see the difference between choosing a super high contrast color pair and one that has a little bit more muted. It makes it a little um, less graphic and less poppy. Um, and so that might make it a little more flexible in what you can wear it with. We, you know, this is sort of the fancy going out to dinner version. And this is a, I can wear it with t-shirts and a jeans kind of version. And I keep on saying we, because I was lucky enough to have an amazing knitter, Mary Scott, I cannot thank you enough, who knit this up for me because it is quite a job. And I honestly just did not have time to re-knit this because really I needed to spend my time knitting and inventing new stuff. So this is Courant and it is huge. It is about 16 inches across in this panel, but then it actually flares at the bottom. You can see it a lot better on this one. The bottom gets significantly, when you transition from the, what I think of as the scale pattern to the, this is the Lotus pattern. It actually increases two stitches each repeat because it goes from like, I think it's a 16 stitch repeat to an 18 stitch repeat. So it actually flares out. And so it has a bit of a trumpet shape on the bottom. Um, it starts with a provisional cast on, and you can see you do get this stripe in the middle. This is your provisional cast on and you cast it on and you work in one direction. So there's a lot of this dragon, what I consider scale pattern going all the way down. And then as I said, it transitions to the Lotus pattern. And then you go back to your provisional and you do the whole thing all over again. It's just the same thing twice to create the symmetry of the stole. Is it working? <laughs> so that is what it looks like. So it's 16 across the center in the width and then it's wider. It gets out to 20 something flared and it is like around a hundred inches long. And I love long rectangular stoles like this because it really gives you a lot of styling options. You have so much fabric to work with that you can do. You can wrap it around once and have it hang or you can just, there's so many different ways. You can do the thing where you fold it in half let me get it in half and do the thing where you wrap it around your neck. If you really want to be warm and you got to fuss with it to get it to do fun stuff, but you can wrap it around and fold it like that. And then you've got like a fancy cravat. <laughs> and it's just, oh, I love this piece. I'm very proud of this piece. This was Let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. One thing I do want to mention is it is chart only. Um, I am going to work on, and if there is demand for it, I'm going to work on getting it translated into written. It's just that that takes a lot of time and a lot of pages. Um, but if there are people who are interested in knitting this who is uh, who cannot read charts, let me know in the comments below, and I will put it on a priority to get it updated with written instructions. But that wasn't something that was included in the Twist Collection pattern. It is the second mosaic lace piece I designed after Golden Lion Throne. And once I figured out that I could do combine the slip stitch color work with the lace, 
I was like, how far can I push this? And I'm going to be honest, it took, here, let's put her on top here. Do, do, do. We're just going to let her hang for a second. It took almost six months to figure this out because I was still trying to understand how the slip stitches interact with decreases and how it does all kinds of things. And so it took me a long time to get this swatch done, to get everything to line up, to make sure that every color when you did decreases stacked the right way that I wanted to stack them. So it took a long time. And then when I finally had it, I was so happy and I'm like, now how am I going to get this out here? See, it's a combination of the slip stitch color with Estonian style lace. I used an Estonian stitch dictionary as my base. And so these are the sort of chevronies and they did come out. They're not what people think of immediately when they think of Estonian and people think of noops. But the big thing that people think of when they think of Estonian style lace are these. The lotus flower motif and they specifically these guys right here. Those are uh, seven into threes I believe is what they're called. Um, I'd have to look at the pattern but what it is is you go like you're going to knit three together but you knit one and then yarn over and then knit through the same three again and then yarn over and knit through the same three again and yarn over and you do that until you've taken those three stitches and made seven stitches. So it's knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, and that's your seven and that causes, you know what, it might be easier to see you want my silent partner is going to get a little naked. So you can see, I think a little bit better here. And it creates this flare out. And then when you get to these points, you have to get rid of your extra stitches because seven, six, five. So there's four extra stitches, four or five. Yeah, math. And so then you get these like quadruple decreases and they're kind of fancy because I wanted see how it's got the light color stripe and it goes into the decrease but the light color stripe stays on top so there's some fancy decreases in there that you're not going to see anywhere else because I had to make them up <laughs> um, they don't even have really names I think one's like three into seven special or something like that um, but to get these to get the patterning to work correctly and you can see it. I just, I'm still, I love this piece. Um, and the transition I adore. How the transition, how it comes out of the scale and into the lotus and it kind of gets that taper tulip top, like the tops of those, um, the onion domes on the Russian Orthodox cathedrals. I think it looks really cool. And, but it's all knitting stripes and slipping stitches. Here's what the back looks like. You're not carrying any yarn across. You work with one color, you drop it, you knit a right side and a wrong side, you drop it, you pick up the other color. You're carrying the yarn up the side, you're knitting stripes and slipping stitches. And that's what makes the color work lace possible because there's no carried yarn to get in the way of the lace. Okay, we're going to flip this around and bring back to the pretty, pretty new one. Look how gorgeous it is. And I really would encourage you to click through to the Ravelry page um, because I did a photo shoot this week with my beautiful mother and she modeled it for me so you can see how it is possible to wear it. So this is Courant. This is its uh, relaunch in its beautiful new yarn, Woodbury, from, from uh, Miss Babs. I will leave a link in the description below to uh, the Miss Babs where you can see it and get it for yourself. It comes in amazing colors, I will say, and I really can't stress this enough. 
This is such an intricate piece. You do not want to do it with variegated yarn. I know that Miss Babs has unbelievably tempting variegated yarn, but you, it's not going to work in this piece. You want two um, solids. You can get away with a little bit of like the semi-solidness where it's like a tonal and it'll just be pretty if you have um, high contrast, but you really need to do two solids in this particular piece. It's a lot of knitting, but I think it is well worth it because it's just, um, it's, it's extravagant. I just love it. And honestly, it's not as hard as it looks. Uh, down here, it gets a little bit, if, but if you think you can do this type of lace, then adding the color work doesn't really add that much extra complexity. And this part up here is really nowhere near as hard as it looks. This is just yarn overs and double decreases and they're spaced apart. And it's just knitting stripes and slipping stitches. I'm telling you. So that is Courant. I hope y'all love it as much as I do. If you would like, or if you have any questions, whew, let's, let's put it on. There we go. If you have any questions about it, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. If you have any thoughts, you know what I love doing? Come on over to the Facebook group. I love people helping people pick out different color combos because it's kind of like I get to shop vicariously and that is so much fun. So if you decide you do want to work it and need a little help, either come to my Ravelry group or the Facebook group and I can help you pick out different colors and it's just so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it the thumbs up. If you would like to receive notifications whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.